Hello and welcome back to the show. This is episode 612 and I'm really excited to have my new friends Beth and Greg Langston here with me today. They are the co-founders of College Flight Plan. Beth graduated from Purdue University in education and is an expert essay editor with a proven track record of helping students navigate the dreaded college applications essay process with tremendous success. And Greg also graduated from Purdue's Cranert School of Business and is an expert in building high-performance teams across 10 different industries. He built and led businesses of over $1 billion and has worked in 65 countries. Together, they've been able to blend their unique professional perspectives and training with their roles as engaged parents to develop transformational self-discovery courses for high school students. Welcome, Beth and Greg. It's great to have you here. Well, thank you. Thanks, Glad Aaron. to be here. So you guys are knee deep in the college prep process. Yes, How almost, go ahead. almost the pre-college prep process too. Oh, I like that. That's going to be an interesting thing to discuss. How did you guys find your way into this arena? Well, it really started with our own kids. They they were our guinea pigs, and so we raised our children overseas for the most most part, which was a wonderful experience. By the time our son, who's the oldest, was 13, uh, he had been to 12 different schools in five different countries. Wow. (laughs) So yeah, that was, we did a lot of adjusting, but what a great experience. I mean, they got to learn foreign language at a young age, which is key. I recommend it for all kids. They're not as inhibited when they're young. They gained a great appreciation for other cultures. Like when we lived in Singapore, at the Singapore American School, there were 78 nationalities represented in K through 12. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, what a once in a lifetime opportunity to have that. So, you know, they had some amazing educational experiences. And as an educator, I was very involved. <laughs> I was hands on in everything to make sure it was flowing well. Sometimes we had to do homeschool, which is great. I I'm, I love doing homeschool with my kids and it freed up a lot of their afternoons so we could do other things in those countries. But like Australia was on a different school year. So I had to be involved in that while we waited for the school year to open in January. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then Singapore, we bounced back to the Northern Hemisphere school year. So a lot of homeschooling involved. And, And then in Mexico, our kids were the only English speakers in their whole school. Wow. It, it was a little school in Cuernavaca, Mexico. So they'd come home in the afternoon and I didn't speak Spanish. I took German in school. So I was learning Spanish. We had the Spanish English dictionary in one hand and all their homework in the other. And we would plow through for like four hours every afternoon getting their work done. But they did it. They could do it. And amazing. Yeah, it's amazing what kids can do. But, you know, so we also had a school in our house. We hired a teacher. Uh, one year to come down and live with us. And we had some other expatriate kids who we we had third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade in our house, which was wonderful. It was a great year of schooling for them. But we knew we had to get back to the States by at least by the time they reached high school because we wanted to prepare them or have them prepared for the college application process. We thought there'd be more opportunity for self-discovery and those type things in high school. In the U.S. because there was, didn't there wasn't exist any overseas, overseas right? right? But and then it turns out there wasn't an opportunity in high school either in the U.S. So and on the other hand, Greg, as an international executive, what running large corporations, he was provided with hours of executive training and coaching to equip him with all these great leadership skills and team player skills, which is great to know. And he kept asking why did I have to wait 20 years to learn this? And why aren't they teaching this to kids in high school right now? 
<laughs> yes, right. So with Greg's executive training and my education background, we started developing tools on our own that we used on our own children, right? They were our guinea pigs. We didn't we didn't break them. We didn't break them. No. But, I didn't uh, think so. <laughs> and and then their friends were also in our workshops and then area students were in our workshops and it just grew and we were getting such positive results. So it's wonderful. That's how we got started in this 20, 20 years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. What a great story. So what is, what jumps to mind for either one of you as one of the most notable, memorable uh, kids you worked with? Mm. I think that's a, that's a, well, a good example. Um, there's a young man who came from Albania who was, um, he came by himself when he was 15. And uh, this was 20 years ago. We put him through the program, we mentored him. And um, now, long story short, he was just named one of the top 20 professionals under 40 in the city of Miami. And so Amazing. Um, that's a, a wonderful example. And he, did so well. He's done very, very well, but he's actually sponsored his nephew, who's now in Albania, uh, who's a high school student, to go through our process. And we've helped him go through that process. And now he's gotten scholarships to come to the United States. Yeah, he's going to go to school in Florida and got a great scholarship. So we're so excited. And the that only other fabulous. two, I mean, they're, they're obviously our two, our two kids, our son uh, has done exceeding, exceedingly well, and our daughter is as well. So we're very fortunate in that regard. Do you tend to work with kids, work more often with kids who know, who are more clear on what they, their career dreams are, or do you work with kids who are more, oof, I have no idea. Both. <laughs> we get both, uh, which is great because those that have a pretty good idea of what they want to do, this helps confirm that and uh, narrow their goals with what they want to do. We set goals and their purpose. Why do they want to do that? And then the ones that don't know, it becomes clear to them what they want to do. Sometimes it's not college for these kids. Sometimes it's a vocation. You know, college isn't for everybody. And more and more, I think people are seeing that. Um, so if it's not for you, then do something you're going to love doing. You know, like our son, his whole life, he thought he wanted to go into medicine. And, you know, that was his thing. He was going to be a surgeon. And then he interned during high school with a cardiovascular surgeon and a neurosurgeon. And after his summer, he was like, that is not what I want to do at all. So just encouraging kids to do internships, to get jobs or volunteer at places where they think they might want to work or areas that they might want to study and see if that's really what they think it is because a lot of times they have no idea what they're getting into <laughs> that's such a good point i work with a special needs student mm -hmm. and he uh, got an opportunity to work at an animal shelter and this is something he'd been dreaming of for several years because he loves animals he didn't even make it through his first day Oh and he goodness. called his family and said, you have to come get me immediately. I can't stand the smell. It's hot. I, I can't be here. I have to get out of here. And so knowing what I know about him, it made perfect sense. But mm -hmm. he came home feeling really badly about himself. Oh. And I tried to help him see, like, can you look at this instead of feeling like you failed? Can you look at this as a wonderful gift of learning more about you. Yes. So now, you know, if someone offers you a job working on a farm, even though you love animals, that's probably not going to be a good thing to say yes to. Absolutely. So this is actually valuable information that you can gain. Yes. So valuable. Oh my gosh. I mean, our kids at the end of their self-discovery, they come up with, they're like transformed into these confident kids who feel they have more control over their lives and where they're going and they can speak well to who they are. Um, they have this um, clarity and knowing their values uh, and their weaknesses and their 
purpose in life and what they want to do with their lives. They're just much more confident and we love it and they can express it better. They, we walk them through this process where they can express it either in their essays, you know, as they're doing the application process or in job interviews, right? Or in interviews with alumni from different universities. They can use this and have used it a lot. So when do you typically start working with teens or tweens and then how long through the process do you stay connected with them? Well, we normally start, we suggest that um, you should not start the last month of your senior year, <laughs> which is I would what, agree. Uh, <laughs> uh, lots of families do. In fact, we yes. were on another podcast and the host said, yeah, I figured out what I wanted to do like a couple of months before I went to college and that didn't work out too well for me. We suggest that uh, freshman year, they're still getting used to what high school is like. So we think sophomore uh, and junior year is really a good year to a good time to start doing this the self discovery process. And a lot of times when they're seniors, if they come to us just for the essay part, and I still help pull out some of those deep things that they haven't had a chance to learn. And then once they go through the application process and are accepted, then that next summer, they can go through the self discovery course because mm -hmm. they have a little more time. That's the problem when you're a senior. It, your life is so full. There's not much time to add other things. That's so true. And junior year, I think junior year is the absolute worst. It is, it is like a marathon and it's grueling mm -hmm. and they're busy and they're working hard and goodness. Mm -hmm. One of the good things about the self-discovery, regardless of what self-discovery they, they choose to do, is that they're able to say, you know what, this is what I'm really interested in. So, and this is what I'm not interested in. So maybe some of those activities that they were thinking about doing in their junior year that they would normally do, they can opt out of those. They can say, listen, I'm not gonna do three sports because I'm not gonna be a pro in either one of those sports. I enjoy this one the most. That frees up time to be able to do something else that is gonna really help me for my vocation or my, my college career. And that clarity really does help them a great deal. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I could see how that would really help them. Let me ask you this, because I talk about parenting on my show, how, what do you find, how would you describe if possible, but I know it's a spectrum, how would you describe the parents of the kids that you work with? Oh, we have a whole range. <laughs> I can tell you stories. Oh, I bet. <laughs> Um, do tell. Oh, gosh. Well, we, there's the extreme of parents who get into their kids ways. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. if you could just step back and let your, your kid go and develop and uh, I have oh this wonderful student here and he was he he was what I call for his essays an overwriter and he didn't go through our self discovery but I was trying to pull things out of him and we when we would have a meeting. It was so great. And then mom would walk in the room and take over. And one time she actually told me on the phone, she goes, you know, I really don't want him to go away to college, even though he was highly qualified to get in anywhere. I just want him to stay at a community college. Poor boy. She kept saying, poor boy, poor boy. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this poor kid doesn't have a chance if mm -hmm. his mom's telling him poor boy. And then I have other wonderful parents that are go, you go with it. You you run with it, do your thing. And they're so pleased when the child sits down with the parent afterwards in a summary meeting, we have a summary document that they deliver to their parents, everything that they earned and parents are amazed. And they're all like, I want to go through this. Can I, can you do, you do adults too? And, and uh, the kids, just the confidence that they have. And and the parents also say, I wish I, I thought I knew you. I, I know a lot about you, but I didn't know a lot of this stuff. And it mm -hmm. also allows the child to take control, study what they want to study, go in the vocation they want to, and the parents feel more confident in their decision. It really does change the dynamic because typically it's parents saying, you got to do this for the college. You got to do this for the college. You got to do this for admissions. Did you take this test yet? We got to prep for this. Do we need to get you tutoring? And what the program does is it allows the student to have a sense of control because instead of take a family and we've seen this many times 
where there's a family and they're predominantly lawyers or they're doctors and they say, well, Johnny, you got to be a lawyer or Susan, you've got to be a, a doctor because look at everybody, we're all doctors. When Susie or Johnny would be a terrible doctor, but they'd be very good at being some other, uh, some other activity, an architect or what have you, the self-discovery allows them to in turn present to their parents credibly through the summary that Beth was mentioning and saying, mom and dad, these are my values and this is why they're important to me. These are my strengths. These are my weaknesses from 200 data points of information that they get. The, this is my purpose. This is what I want to do. This is what I do uniquely well, just like the student that you have with the special needs. He now knows what he can do uniquely well and what he doesn't do well. This is what I do to solve problems. So therefore armed with this information, these are my life goals, my five year, one year goals. And this is the main, these are the majors that I'm going to pick. And this is what the career that I have uh, set for myself in the future. What do you think about that? And the parents are like, oh my goodness, that's amazing. That just sounds, that just sounds like the ideal scenario, right? If every okay. kid could have that experience, that'd be amazing. Um, I had a meeting last week with um, a gentleman who's very senior ranking assistant superintendent of a very large school system here in San Diego. And he said, after I took him through the process, he says, in my 38 years of teaching, he said, I've never seen a process that integrates the new buzzword is SEL, social uh, emotional learning, the SEL with the student, the parents and the counselors and the teachers all together into one. This is amazing. And so that's very encouraging when you hear somebody who's a, a tenured, very, you know, very senior uh, educational uh, professional say that to us. That is, that's high praise. Yeah. That's amazing. And I think, I think that it seems to me that there is in many schools, I don't want to paint too broad of a brushstroke, but in many high schools, there's a push for college. And of course, that's not the only message everywhere, but there's a push for college when you, you kind of mentioned earlier that maybe college isn't necessarily the right choice for every child, and maybe they'd be an amazing plumber or a gifted electrician or something. And I know that these, I, I read, I've read articles where these trade um, apprenticeships go unfilled year after year after year because no one's encouraging anybody to go into them. And, you know, I don't think robots can replace every aspect of the human being. So we're still going to need plumbers. We're still going to need electricians, carpenters, and people to do these kinds of things. Yeah. And yeah. so I think it's, it's, it's great to hear that you help kids figure out what it is they want to do, even if it might not be college, even if college isn't necessary for what it is they want to do. Yes. And what is the dropout rate of kids that go to college? Is it like 40%? 40, right. And then so if they're dropping out at 40% and then of those wow. who finally graduate, it took 40% of those students took four years to get there. 60% of them took six years because they're changing majors, mm -hmm. you know, three times. And the kids that dropped out shouldn't have been in college in the first place, probably, or they didn't know how much it cost. You know, there are many variables that go into why students drop out. So if they could they can save a lot of money in the end if they don't either if they choose not to go to college or if they know what they want to study because each year i mean tell me the prices of college well uh in state all in costs twenty seven thousand dollars out of state forty three thousand dollars private school fifty thousand dollars ivy league is eighty thousand dollars and just think if a student goes for two years um and then drops out, the real travesty is that they, they drop out, they don't have a degree, they can't earn, they have to pay the money back, they can't earn the money to pay it back effectively, they yeah. are totally demoralized, and they're not working in their purpose. And so this is happening more and more today. And the good thing about whatever self discovery families and students get, it really does pay off by going through that process. It's so, 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 so true. 
I could not agree more. If a child is a, a young person is encouraged to go to school and it's not right for them, and then they do only make it through one or two years, then they're so demoralized. And if they had had the opportunity to do some self-discovery and figure out and get a little more clear on what, what they, what they're interested in, what their strengths and their passions are, what they, what they they gravitate towards. If they could have that opportunity to discover that stuff and it didn't take them through the college path or it took them a different way than they thought, like a family of lawyers, maybe lawyer, being a lawyer is not for that child. And if they could find, get closer to the path that they're meant to be on from the beginning, oh my gosh, it avoids wasting so much money. It avoids making the kid feel like a failure and just squandering and floundering and then everybody's upset. It just avoids so much, so yeah, much. We, we don't understand why high schools don't pursue this with their students. Why don't they give them these opportunities to learn about themselves? Why are they pushing everybody towards college? And plus, there are 424, the national average is 424 um, high school guidance counselors to every no, students. Uh, students, to every one guidance counselor. And the average, the recommended amount is in the low 200s per guidance counselor. In and California, the, it's 900 yeah. students per counselor. So how are you going to get that self-discovery? Yeah. You, you you know, even if the person was a superwoman uh, or superman, they can't do that. And an interesting statistic for you is that recently a study was done and they determined that 87% of people 16 to 29 say they have no purpose or meaning. 87%. It's heartbreaking. It is. And so, you know, we want people to launch or their flight plan from home into whatever their vocation is or into college. And then whatever the, we then want them to launch from college or their vocation and launch into a career, we don't want them to fly back into the parents' basement. Right. You know, it, it, as you were talking, I was thinking about our high school. I like our high school where my kids go. It's, I think it's a very good high school. But when you said, why, why don't schools teach this? My first thought in my mind was, well, the kids are too busy. They don't have time for this. There, there's so much academic stuff that they're required to check off the list. But then I thought, well, wait a second. My son is a freshman in college. Well, he's going back to start his sophomore year in a couple of weeks. But when he, when he was in ninth grade, his schedule, you know, because it's generated by the computer, mm -hmm. his first semester had, well, his whole school year for ninth grade had like six study halls. And I didn't even look at his schedule until a friend of mine said, did you look at the schedule? You might have to adjust something. And I was thinking, adjust something? What, what do you mean? And I looked at it and I thought, ah, and I was panicked. And I sent the, the guidance counselor an email. Oh my gosh, he has six, six study halls. And I'm thinking, oh, he's never going to graduate. Goodness gracious, we got to get these out of here. So she adjusted his schedule and I think she left two in or something, which worked out really well for him because it allowed him to get some school, some homework done in school to lighten his load at home. Right. So it was great. But I remember kind of in the back of my mind feeling a little bit of stress, like he's got a study hall. Okay. Well, that's good for, uh, for now. It helps him get his schoolwork and his homework done, but Oh my gosh, if he has too many, maybe he won't graduate on time. I mean, it was ridiculous. <laughs> but what ended up happening is that by his senior year, he, I think he was in school. He might have been in school the whole day in the fall of his senior year. But by the, the spring of his senior year, which was the pandemic. So he only got to enjoy this until, you know, for a month or and a half or something, but he was finished school by like 945 in the morning. So then I think, okay, well, there actually is time. There actually is time. If, like if a school, if there's any board of ed members, superintendents, teachers, 
decision makers in schools listening to this episode, I think there really is time to fit a, even just a nine week elective into that sophomore junior year kind of time frame where kids could have a discovery experience like this, where they do get to spend a class period for a few weeks talking about what it is they like taking some um, some questionnaires and trying to kind of narrow it down because you're right, the guidance counselors, they don't have time to, to help all these kids figure out what they're meant to right. do. And there are a lot of tools out there, you know, it, and what happens is parents think that, you know, a school is using Naviance or one of these other software programs that exist, and they have components in there to do an assessment like a strong, um, you know, skills analysis or what have you. Those are great, but it's on a given day how you take that one assessment that all of a sudden you come out and you say, okay, I'm going to be an architect. Um, I don't think that's, that's not enough. That's not comprehensive enough. I think it's important for a student to really do a deep dive and get insights from people who really care about them mm -hmm. to be able to come to that determination to say, this is what I do really well, and I suck at this. So I should probably not spend a whole bunch of time doing this or learn how to mitigate that. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great, that's a great uh, point. And in the meantime, while these classes don't exist, <laughs> students and parents can certainly reach out to you to, to get some guidance and a deep dive that would definitely help them have some more clarity and direction. Because definitely. I know so we, many we are kids, here to ease that stress that they're feeling. Yeah, you know, so many kids areas. and parents feel that stress. Ah, I think there's so much pressure, even if we just talk about the kids going to college, I think there's so much pressure. And I think about Facebook and I think about, you know, the past years, five, 10 years, whatever it is. And I think about how I think about people in, you know, on my friend group friend lists and they post, oh, so my child committed to blah, blah, blah school or university of or such and such college. And it's like this big, huge event. But I think I, I always tell teenagers that you're, when you go to college, you are not signing your name in blood on any piece of paper. So you are not, this is like, not like a life sentence. And if you get in there and you realize that the major you picked doesn't feel right, the school you picked doesn't feel right, you can always change. You don't have to put so much pressure on yourself. Do the best you can to make the decision that feels right, given what information you have. And then if you need to change, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. I think there's so much pressure on kids these days. It's so true. You are so wise to do that. And about the Facebook and social media, we try to teach our students to have a growth mindset mm, and I to love stop, stop measuring themselves against social media and um, about the perfection. I love explaining right. that. You know, you can't measure yourself against perfection. And, you know, the no. last time, well, we flew a couple months ago, which was kind of a treat again. But, um, you know, if you can just visualize in your audience, visualize when you're in an airplane and you're up at 35,000 feet and you're coming up on the clouds that are on the horizon and you're moving towards the horizon, that's perfection. And as you get closer to those clouds and the horizon, the horizon keeps moving away. And that's yes. the same with the social media that, that the kids are facing. And that is not a positive way to measure yourself. And the, the best thing to do is measure yourself against something that is tangible. So you measure yourself against what you accomplished yesterday. That's very clear. That's very measurable. And that will help provide you with more confidence than trying to measure yourself against somebody's curated, um, beautiful photograph about um, them being on some vacation or being approved at some school. Yes. And we teach them progress, not perfection. You just mm. want to progress. Focus on your own results. Stop comparing yourself. And your favorite word in the whole yeah my favorite word is with the growth mindset is the word yet and i that love that i word. haven't learned that yet yes but i can figure that out and when we grew up it was a fixed mindset until yes. carol dweck wrote uh, wrote a great book 
the fact is you thought, okay, well, I'm born with this type of intelligence and this kind of knowledge, and the science now proves that you can continue to learn. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can learn everything, and that's why positive affirmations that you practice with your, with your clients are so important in giving the sense of confidence to both parents as well as the students. Such good points. My kids used to swim and I loved when they started getting into it. I loved the whole environment of swimming because unlike a team sport, I mean, you're kind of on a team and you may be in a relay, but it's really an individual sport. And unlike a team sport, the person you're competing against doesn't have to be the people in the lanes next to you. It can be your last, your best time in that event. And the really cool thing about kids swimming is that they're always growing bigger and stronger and getting faster. So the vast majority of the time until they hit really high, high levels, elite levels as kids, the vast majority of time they're constantly beating their last time, their best time. So I saw so many kids walking out of swim meets where the, the parents were congratulating them, like genuine happiness and, wow, you did great. You shaved three seconds off your time or what have you. And the kids are feeling good. And then I'm thinking about, you know, my kids played other team sports too and still do. And I think about watching parents and kids walk off a baseball field, a soccer field, you know, all these different team sports and the kid is down in the dumps and the parents oh. getting on them, you know, like, yes, when we can focus on being better than we were yesterday, I think that is a confidence booster. It takes, uh, hopefully it mitigates the perfection, uh, the perfectionistic tendencies or the, the, uh, I can't think of the word I'm looking for. What is the word I'm looking for? When you're tempted, the temptation towards perfection, it takes that away. And then you're just trying to be the best version of you. I mean, mm -hmm. nobody can be better at being you than you are. So if we focus on that and encourage kids to focus on that, figure out who it is you're supposed to be, who you came here to be, and then try every day to be the best version of that. Who could feel bad about that? And if you can help them to capture with their feedback that they get from parents, friends, loved ones, and people can do this on with just a piece of paper, and they capture their their passions, their strengths, their goals, what how they solve problems with certain different assessments that, that we give, and people can pick other assessments. And we help them to craft a paragraph that says, this is my wheelhouse. So when I'm placed in a situation where I'm not sure, I'm not clear, and I need to volunteer, be it at school and a project or work, they know that if I volunteer for this aspect of the program or the project, that they're gonna be confident in, in their success versus saying, well, I hate public speaking and everything else has, has been picked. So I gotta be the person who presents this. That's not gonna work well, That's that one's gonna hurt. And so it's or leave a mark, as people say. Um, the, the fact is you want them to feel that they are working in their wheelhouse or what we call their distinct natural ability, their DNA. Oh, I like that. I like that acronym. Very good. I like it. And, and the things that you're teaching kids about themselves, you're teaching them how to get to know themselves better. That applies not just to the college process or what kind of job do you want to have, but like you said, just life in general. If you're, if you are on a committee at your church or your PTA or, you know, your community association or whatever, and like you said, there are positions to be filled, you're going to easily know which ones you're well suited for and which ones you should not sign up for. Absolutely. So. And one one additional key component that we think is is unique and very valuable, particularly in this day and age, is the aspect of personal core values mm. and core beliefs. And if I can describe it, and this is the basis for our whole program, if you can imagine a large tree with a very deep root system, and you're looking at a cross section, and you see the roots that are going deep into the ground, 
Those are your beliefs or your values. Those support the tree trunk, which is your purpose, which support the branches, which are your goals, your objectives, and so forth. And so, you know, any family, any student is going to go through the challenges of life. And just like a tree is being accosted, if you will, with a hurricane, uh, and the wind's blowing, if it's got a deep root system, it's gonna weather that storm. If it doesn't have a, a deep root system, it's gonna topple over. And so what we do is we teach the students to pick what are the values that really drive them. They pick the primary major, primary values, and then their core values. And then we have them go through an exercise where they say, who or what is impeding my ability to live by this value of love? Do I have an estranged relationship with a relative or, uh, if it's integrity, am I cheating in class? Should I keep doing that? What should I do? What should I change? And the value of this is if a student has a clear set of values, when they're no longer with their parents and they're no longer with their guardians and they're by themselves and they're, they're going to be having to make a decision, they're going to be able to rely on what their values are and they'll be able to make much sounder decisions. And so that's that's the way our program begins. And I think that's pretty uh, it's, it's very valuable for every student to learn. I am telling you, I wish every student could walk through your doors, your virtual doors, and gain the tremendous benefits from what you guys have created, because it just sounds amazing. Thank you. Really appreciate that. We enjoy so, doing it. <laughs> I can tell. I can tell that you guys really love that. And it's obviously aligned with your core values and your purpose because you're both of you, I mean, for those of us, for those of you listening to the audio, you might not see this, but if you check out the video on YouTube, you can see that you both light up when you talk about this. So I can tell that this really means a lot to both of you. It does. It definitely does. So, it's I mean, I think tools. you're a living example. Well, we're, we're always learning progress, not perfection. We're always That's looking right. to get better each and every day. And if we can help kids to discover what's important to them, one person, one student, one family at a time, that jazzes us. So before we wrap up and I ask people where they can connect with you, let me ask you one big question. What is the best advice, the best one piece of advice you would give to parents who are listening or their kids? I would say start early it, in this self-discovery process. If you already think your kids are going to go to college, still start early. Don't wait until senior year or August, you know, August 1st, the, the applications open up don't wait till then. We're, we, I already have so many kids who are finished with their essays already, the ones we know about, except the supplementals, because we always know what the big essays are going to be. And we started early and it takes the stress off. But for self-discovery, start sophomore, junior year. They, when they have a little bit of time and space and less stress before the applications start or deciding not to go to college and the vocation vocational study or preparation internships uh, start what would you say is your first um i agree you need to start early and that means you know getting a relationship with your teachers with your counselors you got to be the squeaky wheel if there are 400 students uh you, you want that counselor when you need him or her you want them to give the the advice that you need so they need to know you uh, don't start working on your grades in your junior and senior year. You got to focus at the very beginning, and you know really learn about yourself. Learn what motivates you, what makes you unique, because the sooner you can find that out, the better the rest of your life's going to be. And for parents to help your kids uh, learn how to set goals, smart goals, we use specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound goals, and to set priorities. I mean they get so much on their plate that they can't figure out, they get overwhelmed. What do I really absolutely have to do? And that's key. Because there's success. the urgent and then there's the important mm -hmm. and you need to know how to navigate that. And we teach the kids how to do that. I love it. So again, using the tools that I learned in business to lead ever increasing businesses, it's, it's not rocket science, it's basic blocking and tackling, but you don't need to wait 
until you're in your 40s to learn that stuff. And so that's why we do what we do. Well, what you do is invaluable for all the kids who are fortunate enough to cross paths with you. So hopefully more kids and families and parents will hear our interview today and they will reach out to you to help their kids gain this priceless self-discovery information about themselves. So where can people connect with you guys and learn more about your programs and find out stuff? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. They can go to collegeflightplan.com, collegeflightplan.com, or email me directly, greg at collegeflightplan.com. Or beth at collegeflightplan.com. That's correct. <laughs> and uh, what we've prepared for your listeners is a special document that the parents, it's called the Parent Starter Kit for Teen Self-Discovery that has a whole bunch of stuff in there that statistics the parents need to know, top five early actions uh, to help your kids into college or vocational success, some free assessments that we do recommend, ACT, SAT test prep, that's still important. You can have the best self-discovery, but if you don't have the grades and you don't have the G, uh, the, you know, the, the, the grades or the test scores, it's, that's permission to play. You need to have those. And then also the information on how to get in touch with us. So they can go to collegeflightplan.com slash guide. Excellent. Well, I will make sure we put these links in the show notes so that everybody can find them easily. Wonderful. And I wanted to thank both of you for spending this time with me today and sharing this valuable information with my audience. I know that I have parents of teenagers who listen, so I think they're really going to enjoy this conversation, and I do hope that they will reach out to you both. Oh, thank you, Erin. It's our pleasure to be here. We Absolutely. appreciate the opportunity. Thanks so much. So that wraps up today's episode, and I hope that you've gotten a lot of value out of our discussion today, and I hope that wherever you are in this world, you make it a day full of self-discovery.